you don't need to go through this step. I've only set up this arrangement to show you where the information is coming from. Once again, I put the template on the table with the arm rail on it and the 7 8 inch gap established here. When I do that, notice that all of the long spindles radiate from a point about there. The short spindles, front is back, back is front. On this gauge, there are three points. That's what they correspond to. So I'm going to use this as I'm drilling to sight on. This is the setup for the first spindle hole, for that center spindle. This is the cheapest insurance policy you'll ever buy. It's just a clamp and the reason I put it on there is we used oak because it splits so nicely and evenly and cleanly. It retains that property. If I drill a series of holes and then wobble my bit, it's possible for me to make the arm rail go pop, 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 and ruin your whole day. So the clamp prevents the wood from spreading and prevents that catastrophe. Now my sight line for this one particular hole is the center of the curve. I set it on the X, on the crosshairs. The bit is a 7 16 bit. Just as all the holes in the seat are 9 16, so all the holes in the arm rail are 7 16. There we go. Now we change our setup. There we go. All of the long spindles will radiate from the farthest point. When we're done, we'll change and front is back, back is front. These remain at 16 degrees. My clamp. So I set this up, once again I'm using the slot in the handle as a pointer to point at the mark and the gauge. And this one too remains at 16. Now we change the angle to 12 degrees. And 
happens to the last long spindle. It too is at 12 degrees. I use the slot to point at that mark. That takes care of the longs, and once again, everything about shorts is different. And so we change the setup. Front is back, back is front. And it's at four degrees. Now four degrees is close enough to the vertical that it's not necessary to offset the spindle. So we're going to center the holes on the arm rail. Front is back. And back is front. side. All we have to do is turn everything around. Once again, front is back, four degrees, center the hole. And back is front, center the hole, four degrees, because everything about short spindles is different. And there we go. The holes are all drilled, and we're ready to fit the spindles. We're going to now choose the spindles for their best placement in the chair. The straightest three spindles are going to be put here in the center of the chair because these spindles are perfectly straight. These spindles have a slight bow in them. So if any of these spindles have a bow, it makes them ideal for this location. So that's what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to choose the three straightest spindles and the ones with the bow, the most bow. And this is real easy to do. It's like sighting down the spindle. It's like if I were Robin Hood and I was shooting against the Sheriff of Nottingham's champion, I would take the arrows out of my quiver and I would select the, the best and straightest of them. So that's all I'm doing is looking down the spindles and choosing the the three that are straightest. Now I'm going to choose the two with the most bow in them. These two are going out here. These two are here by default. Now the spindles get cut to length. The lengths are on the dimension sheet they are 3 at 23, 2 at 22, and 2 at 20. I separate them out to avoid confusion. This is the method I use, once again, 
to avoid confusion. The problem with measuring a spindle is you're going to be paying attention up here and if you've done something like this you get you end up cutting the spindle short. To avoid that I put the end of my tape measure in a hole, dog hole, and I align the spindle and hold it there. Now my sense of touch tells me that those two ends are aligned as I mark here at 20. Those two are 20. This pair is at 22. Before I cut wood, I like to visually confirm that my marks are where I want them to be. Now I'll cut the spindles. And again, to avoid any surprises, 3 at 23, 2 at 22, 2 at 20. Now, we're going to fit each spindle individually to a hole in the arm. We're not going to use the, uh, the gauge blood, the go-no-go -no -go gauge. We're going to use the hole in the arm because the hole in the arm is where that spindle is going to be for the rest of this chair's lifetime. And so that's the hole that matters. I'm going to fit it to the hole where it will go in the chair. The first step will be to reduce the spindle to 3 eighths along a couple of inches of the top. The reason being that the hole it's going to pass through in the bow is 3 eighths. And so I need to fit that down uh, at this stage. To do so, I choke up the spindle. The problem at this point is that it's flexible. And down two, three inches, I'm going to start to reduce its diameter. I want it to occur gradually over a bit of a distance. I don't want this to look like a sharpened pencil. I don't want the eye to be able to pick it up and spot that there's that sudden reduction. There's the fit that I want, a loose fit over a couple of inches. I don't want a tight fit because if there's friction in the holes when the bow goes on and you multiply that friction by seven, you're not going to be able to move the bow. That's step number one. We're now going to fit the end of the shaft through the hole until this block aligned with the top of the arm rail aligns with the end of the tenon. Now to keep this thing from flexing as I'm working, I'll use my, my chest So you can see I've got a ways more to go, but I've also traveled a little bit of distance. As I work now, I'm also going to shape the swelling. So I turn the spindle around, and so I don't break it while I'm working on it. Again, I stiffen it with my chest. And if you notice my head, I keep moving around the spindle as that allows me to see more of it and make sure that I'm getting it to come out. As perfect as I can make it. I 
and smooth the swelling down this way too. There we go. The next step is to scrape this. And I'm going to scrape it in a manner that is fast and aggressive. Let me show you how that's done. This accomplishes nothing. Instead, I will put the spindle on the bench top and I'll take the scraper like this in my hand so I can put maximum force on it. And then I turn the spindle as I scrape. There we go. I leave it in the arm rail. That way I don't confuse it. If I co-mingled it and I, I got myself confused and I skipped one of the steps I've gone through on that spindle, I'm going to find it at a very disagreeable time when there will be no backing up and correcting it. So I want to make sure I make no mistakes. I will do all the steps to each spindle and then I will fit it in the arm rail before moving on to another spindle. So that's the rule. Uh, do not, once you've taken a spindle in your hand, you do not touch another spindle until everything that needs to be done to this spindle is done and it's in the arm rail. And that will keep you from being confused and from finding out your mistake at a very disagreeable time. So now I'm just going to repeat what I just did seven times with the rest of these spindles. Thank you for watching this content. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And check back frequently for more Windsor chair making tips and tutorials.